Washington headquarters, and with primary elections less than a week away, we do want you to be informed about the races that matter in your community. So voters will be casting their ballots for city council on Tuesday. And one of the races to keep a close eye on is in District 13 in the Bronx, which covers Throgs Neck, City Island, Pelham Bay, and Morris Park. <clears throat> Joining us this morning is Democratic candidate Irene Estrada, who is looking to unseat the incumbent Marjorie Velasquez, who was with us yesterday morning. So good morning, Irene. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah, so a little bit about you. I mean, you're no stranger uh, to politics. You served as the former district leader for the 80th district. So what made you decide that you wanted to run for city council? I'm running for city council because people need to be educated on how city council works. Uh, they represent 8 million New Yorkers, and it's 51 members of city council making decisions for us. And out of those 51 um, people who are making decisions for us in city council, their agendas and policies are affecting our communities on a large scale, mm -hmm. from crime, from safety, from, um, from poverty, from housing, uh, education. And we're fighting uh, big monsters when it comes to big money and developers. So I'm running because uh, also because the defunding of the police also affected our community. Mm -hmm. District 13 is a pro-police community. We have really good uh, relations uh, with uh, the 49th Precinct and the, and the 45th Precinct. And we want to maintain that goal to make sure that we have our community safe and cleaner. Okay, let me. you mentioned housing and development, right? So let's go there for a second because there's a lot of controversy around some development in the Bronx, specifically in your district, um, where the Bruckner rezoning plan is, is in this court battle, really. Now, we had your opponent on yesterday, the incumbent, and I want you to take a listen to what she had to say and then get your reaction. Okay. The calls that we get in my office from seniors asking for help, right? A lot of displacement because there aren't enough apartments for them and, and housing specifically geared to our seniors, mm. to our veterans. And so this uh, development that was approved, but it's still now in the courts, um, we have 100 units for seniors with wraparound mm. services. And when we're talking about our veterans, it was securing 25 units for our veterans. So first off, are you for the plan, and how do you respond to what she had to say about that? I believe that um, our city council um, representative is uh, delusional. When it comes to our overdevelopment in Throsneck, it's the people's choice what they want in their communities. These are low-density homes. These are the community uh, who are generational wealth, according to them, that have inherited their homes from their great-great-grandparents. So you're not in favor of it? I'm in favor of what the community wants. What do they want? The, the community wants to be left alone. That's their community. Every community deserves what they want. This is democracy. Mm -hmm. And when you come and bring the developers into communities where you're going to have a fight, you're going to wind up uh, going into the courts and you're going to wind up losing. Uh, am I for housing for the veterans and seniors? Absolutely. But she has been representing this for over two years. I have been dealing with 2700 uh, Randall Avenue with the senior housing. Full of mold, the ceilings are coming down on our seniors. Uh, the majority of our seniors are affected because they're cutting their food stamps. They don't have enough Social Security benefits. So there's a lot of crisis in mm -hmm. our district right now. Okay. And you want to go ahead and continue this overdevelopment and this utopia that everything is wonderful, that everything's going to be fine. Our veterans have been homeless for how long? And the services have not been there. Okay. Well, so uh, my concern with the overdevelopment, they're in court right now. Let me ask you about this. You, last month, you, you led a, a car protest um, over the Just Home program on Seminole Avenue, which apparently would, would house people coming out of Rikers that have serious medical needs. What is your stand on that now? My stand on that will always stand with what the community wants. Indian Village is going to be affected by it. It's right across the street from Indian Village at Jacoby Hospital site. We've been fighting uh, Just Homes and uh, HHC, Jacoby Hospital, and they have affiliated themselves with, uh, with Fortune Society. They might get fu uh, money fueled from the celebrities, but the concern, again, comes to what does that particular community want. Mm -hmm. They're used to living a certain way. Our goal is the safety net for our children, our seniors, and our veterans. That is not acceptable. Um, are we for it? Absolutely not. Are we for it in a different area? Absolutely. Everybody deserves a place to live. But we also know that this is area is not good because it's, it's right by five schools and it's going to affect the whole community and the density.